Our winner today will take home 20,000 US dollars. Grab the popcorn, switch off the lights because it is game time. We are about to see SE Esports go up against Method to Madness to kick off the NA Finals. Method to Madness is underway. It is Grom kicking us off with a little bit of lightning, a double clone, and the Hydra maxing out that King equipment right there with the level 27 Giant Gauntlet and also running the Healer Puppet. Healer Puppet has been very, very strong with the Dragons to be able to get the extra support on the flank of the uh, the Dragons there to make sure that they stay central and working with that King. But there we go. We got the Royal Champion running the Royal Gem and the new Haze Vial. So some new stuff from the update right out of the gate here, Bash. Yeah, here we go with the Clone Bomb onto the Town Hall to take it all down. Ooh, great use of the Clone. Gets a nice little spread there. That Haze Vial will speed up the Royal Champion and make her go a little bit quicker when paired with that Spirit Fox can be really nicely. Now, the one thing about this attack is he's pretty much all in here. I talked about Grom and hoping to see some Hogs, but I don't mind seeing some Dragons, some Hydra here as Grom go ahead and brings in the Royal Champion from the top. That core is pretty much gutted from the blip. Now he's just going to kind of thin out the back end here, Eric. Yeah, watch that uh, defensive Queen there when the Royal Champion approaches because she can pop her Haste file right there and uh, get through the defensive Queen much, much easier. She does. She pops a little bit early there, gets the Queen down, double damage with a double attack speed right there. And it, it also, let's keep in mind that when you use the Royal Gem and the Haste Vial together, while you're not getting the extra protection of something like the Hog Puppet, you do actually get the extra damage enhanced by the speed that the Royal Gem provides. And so there's actually a very, very, very strong combination right there. But the Dragons are easily clean up the backside of the base. The Royal Champion got just far enough there. And the Queen walking along the edge of the base there turns into a Queen Charge with a Healer Puppet. And it's a walk in the park for the rest of the attack here. He just needs to keep the speed up here because with the track record of SE Esports, if we do end up with a double perfect war, then time is the tiebreaker. So looks like he's missing one oh, that they to go the back for. Tower. Yeah, that's oh. going to cost him a few seconds seconds there, but still it's going to come in sub one minute remaining. And so he's going to be able to get it done pretty fast there. And as we pass it over to SE Esports, BJG Baller starts us off here. A little bit of Lalo. We do see the giant gauntlet. We do see the Gila puppet again on the queen. And that's pretty typical with these hero dives. When we run the queen charge, a lot of people are switching to frozen arrow. But during the hero dives, a lot of these pro players are looking for the healer puppet to try to maximize that value. All right, BJG sending in the heroes here. The Queen's going to go in over towards that enemy King. King is going to go ahead and work through that enemy our, our Queen right there on that far side. Clan Castle troops are pulled out, so the Queen will be able to deal with that Lava Hound without issue here. Enemy King goes down, so that'll also free up a little bit of pressure on her. And now he's just going to work through here. Does have that Ice Golem. Ooh, King gets it down with it going to Phoenix. So that's a very nice use of the King in that compartment. Now the Royal Champion will join the party, just looking to thin everything out on this far side. Also a little bit of clean up behind BJG. Well versed in the Lalo. And it looks like uh, a couple of these guys might be together as I see maybe uh, someone next to him there. Let's, let's see how things work. Yeah, uh, what was interesting there is he put that skeleton spell down to try to protect his pro champion, but the ricochet cannon ended up targeting her, gets the spirit fox down very, very early, so definitely not getting the value out of the pro champion they would have hoped for. And he does get all the way to the sweeper there, so those blooms that were lagging behind are going to start to catch back up now, but that delay, that, as they got knocked back a lot there, did hurt that group there pretty significantly, and the queen's going to have to pick up the slack here as she pops her ability, generates the healers, and will have to power through the wall because this model of the area, I think. I feel like the Monoth area is the most significant area that needs to go down here to the balloons, and then the Queen might be able to handle the rest there, and it looks like he's got that under control here, Arch as the Arch balloons Tower. do barely make it through that. Yeah, Archer Tower is dealing a lot of damage here. Queen is still very healthy. Archer Tower will go down the multi-Archer Tower, and now it's going to be a three-star for, three for BJG Baller. I want to see if we kind of get a little bit of a wider shot here. I, I was thinking that's Damien next to him. I, I don't want to say it, but that, that's my thought process here. <laughs> maybe our team starts to get together, since we don't have a traditional land, maybe they're kind of creating their own. Speaking of a fast attack here, Root Riders with Valkyries. This attack is pretty much create a baby funnel, send it all in, and it goes so fast. You're going to have those Root Riders working right up the middle with the Valkyries. And we kind of talked about this in the challenge where these just, the synergy is so, so nice for these true troops. The Root Riders will open up all the wa walls, which will allow the heroes and the Valkyries to search forward and just take out the base. We do see the new Haste Vial there on the Royal Champion. Ice Golems are a common defense against us just to slow down those Root Riders and the core. So 
John's gonna have to work through the middle of this court as his king kind of took a little bit of a outside path. World Champion is already in. Now it's all gonna come down to how he can finish on the Sun Hall. King's doing good work though, getting the scatter shot and a multi arch tower on the left side. World Champion's got that so the same targets dealt with on the right side. Everybody else going right up the gut of the base there, but he did not get the final walls open. But I think the Queen should attack the walls there very, very soon. And with the log launcher at level five now with the new update, he should be able to power through that wall pretty quickly, get the Queen into there. And he does have the archer puppet on the Queen. So she's gonna get a lot of HP recovery right there with a double giant bomb going off right there. She definitely needed a little bit of extra HP and right she might've died right there with a frozen arrow. So gotta keep that in mind here, but the world champion keeps on moving. She still has her ability. And with that ability, she'll easily clear out the back of the base there. And she could even clear it out even faster with a different ability there. But watch the surge as she pops it right about here and she'll cross the base there with the haste and get through over to the left side there a little bit faster. But he's got all the defenses down. He's got to get it cleaned up here as quick as possible. And he didn't bring any additional cleanup troops there that can drop in late. But the Rogue Champion doing some great work there, surging across the top of the base there. And that's where the new equipment can actually not only benefit your ability to triple, but also just making so that you can get a little bit of cleanup done faster as well. Yeah, I mean, that's the nice thing about this attack. You don't necessarily need to bring a bunch of cleanup because it clears out the base so, so quickly. Now it is taking a little bit to clean up the back end here. We'll have to keep an eye on that time, but John will get the three star as the Royal Champion and the remaining heroes come through to finish off this last storage. About 46 seconds remaining on the clock. The Valkyries and the Riders have an enormous amount of synergy. Love to see that attack there and being so strong in the meta, I, I feel like it almost needs another nerf to the Rue Riders because with that update that we just got, the Rue Riders did take a nerf. They lost 600 HP off of their total. And speaking of which, so we saw them losing some HP and we saw the Super Barbarians lose a bunch of their HP as they got nerfed as well. And Max is going to break them out here. It looks like we got a level 24 giant gauntlet there. And I'd imagine that this would be some kind of a blimp to sail across the base here to go and drop in maybe Super Archers. Maybe not though, because he maybe no, you know, he's actually, he's going to do a Yeti bomb out of this, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. No, frozen, or no invisibility, no clones so no Super Archers on this one. He does have the Frozen Arrow on the Queen, the newest epic equipment in Clash of Clans. Tr pretty traditional setup there for the Royal Champion. Here comes the Freeze to make sure that that Invisibility Tower doesn't go off, but there is a Tornado Ooh, here. Okay. This could cause some drama. Keep an eye on this King, Watch that King, watch that King. Oh. oh. <laughs> Town Hall doesn't go down, but wait, it's the it's King down, strikes down, the down. building next to it, and the Giant Gauntlet splash damage backwards and ends up taking it down. So lucky break right there. Good thing he's got that Giant Gauntlet there to be able to get that splash damage. Otherwise, that would have been a lot of trouble here, but he left up a couple of Rocket Blues at the core of the base there. Lava Hound burst, and the Roar Champion doing her best to chase those down right now. A little bit of drama right there, but looks like he's overall keeping it alive here. Roar Champion staying nice and safe behind those Root Miners bash. And this one is cooking. Look at this time. This Royal Champion now getting through here does have the Seeking Shield, so throws her Seeking Shield. And look at the time on this one, Eric. It's going to be about a minute and a half plus Ooh. a minute 35 remaining. Wow, what a quick attack for Max. We got Recall, we got Double Clone, and we got a little bit of Lightning that we can use to take out a Sweeper. But the Queen will deploy on the far right side, going into the Air Defense. Going to probably Recall her out of there before she takes any significant amount of damage, but just let her get that area cleared out there and before she she gets threatened, make so that you can pull her out and then she can get deployed somewhere safe. And then I guess uh, go ahead and, oh, wait, she pops her ability already? You can Ooh. recall those healers though. Right? Yeah, yeah, he can recall the healers. Oh, we lost oh, two. They got taken out. That's the uh, one thing with the healer puppet is it the, puts them yeah. in kind of awkward spots there. Now, one thing we talked about was the Root Riders got a nerf, but almost all dragons got a buff on hit points. So that's why we're starting to see a little bit more dragons. I mean, dragons were already pretty good before they got buffed, but they all gained just a little bit of hit points here. Kirk should be sending this blimp in here. We do have the two clones like his teammate used. So let's see if he can get this town hall down. One thing to keep an eye on is that invisibility tucked behind the town hall. So one thing I was kind of surprised about here is I did not, see, I don't see a rage gem on that warden. I see a healing tome on him, and that's that's very surprising because I would have expected a rage gem when we don't have any rages that are actually going to the dragons. All the spells are going for that blimp. He cloned, did he clone dragons right there? Yeah, a couple of dragons got ahead and cloned. Is that okay? Up. Is that a, uh, usually if I, I think clone dragons, wanted, I feel like it's a mistake. Yeah, I think he wanted the balloons to clone over to the invisibility tower and the mono. So we'll keep an eye on if that plays a factor. The heroes are going to have to sweep all the way through the base now. He still has dragons, and the dragons are doing a great job thinning out the middle. So I don't know that it's going to be a big issue for him, especially with the king still having ability. Remember, the queen.
Kane did have to go to ability early, but with Royal Champion yet to be deployed, I think Kirk can get away with this. Uh, maybe, I guess we'll see. The King's gonna pop his ability search around there. Remember, the Queen already burned her ability earlier, so the King has to get the defensive Royal Champion down right there, and he's got it under control there. He's got his giant gauntlet. He's not only gonna clear that, but he's gonna turn and maybe attack the wall, but he'll at a minimum provide tanking in the area for the Royal Champion. The dragons are still alive, so uh, what kind of Royal Champion equipment we got here? Because that could have a big impact on the back end. Looks like he goes invisible right there. Like, if she's got a sinking shield, then she could pop that air defense there a little bit early, but uh, a haste file could also do some good work. Now she gets targeted by the model. She's starting to take some damage there, and he does pop it. It is a sinking shield, and he gets that invisibility tower to pre-trigger, and that's going to have a big impact on the outcome here. Ooh, keep an eye on her, though. The Spirit Fox went down, so she's going to go down now. It's going to be pretty much on these dragons to sweep in and get this monolith. The queen, queen, watch oh, wait, the queen. Oh, yeah, wait, that wall's open, so the queen can sneak in there. Wait, yeah, this is fine, this is fine. Is it? Kirk is fine. Oh, wait, time, 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 time. Keep an eye on the time, Eric. 18 seconds. Oh, there's some skellies. Uh-oh. All right, well, the king's going to get the wizard tower down with uh -oh. the phoenix picking him back up there. The queen and no, the Kirk. dragons will step over. Okay. There's not a lot of time Ooh. left here, but it's a triple, and that time is very, very slow. Five seconds remain but a triple is a triple and that keeps him in the running. Ooh. They are going to be significantly down on time and time's still going to make a big factor here, but Damien going to go in here and try to keep the triples rolling in for SE Esports. Lots of lightning takes out the monolith, the multi-arch tower, and the eagle artillery, and he'll use that as a funneling, funneling point here for his heroes to dive in. Does have that healer puppet. We're starting to see a little bit more healer puppets. Giant Gauntlet wasn't quite maxed on the king there. The healer puppet is very nice. Healing Tome on the... The Warden, which will help out the balloons a little bit when he uses that ability. So some nice, interesting choices here for Damien. Then the Royal Champion, traditional equipment for her with the Seeking Shield. Kind of seems like teams are just kind of between the Haste Vial and the traditional equipment for the Royal Champion. Keep an eye on this queen because remember when she does use her ability, she will spawn three healers. The one issue with that is they kind of spawn in an awkward spot, but she's gonna look to get this enemy queen and push these heroes in. Watch that single Inferno, lock onto the king right now. Has a super wall breaker. He could attempt to send that in there, get the queen and the king a little bit of support there, but he's gonna be engaging the CC, puts down a poison on the CC, pops the queen ability, generates the healers, and healers are in an okay spot here. One of them is gonna tank for the single Inferno for just a moment, the queen fights through. But I don't think she's going to survive for very long, though. But Delala will go in, will get the blimp protected so we can go and secure the town hall. Spinning around for a little bit there, but a freeze gets the area locked down, and he will make his landing. And overall looking pretty decent here. Just needs to get these balloons over to the left side here to finish off that arch tower. They do get it. And up top here, watch that defensive world champion. She's a major, major threat. We'll get the headhunters there charging through. Headhunters get targeted. They do not get to her in time. Ashley was running off chasing the hound. And the world champion is out of control right now. And he needs to find an answer. Does have his world champion that can go through there. Great freeze on the scatter shot just to protect as many of those balloons as possible. Keep an eye on this world champion. Remember, she does not have the haste vial, so she'll have a seeking shield, which can be used. But keep an eye on these singles as well. Oh, man. That Royal Champion did so much work to all of his offensive troops here. Still got some balloons, still has Royal Champion with Seeking Shield here. Here goes that Seeking Shield getting thrown. Does not skip over to the other single target Inferno. Let's see if she ignores the RC. Oh, she goes into the poison. Okay, oh boy. come on. Oh, oh Diggy! <laughs> Diggy! Diggy passed off from the Warden. Gets the assist for the Royal Champion. And even though she had the Spirit Fox, I think she would have been fine either way there. But the Diggy taking the stun there ensures that he makes it through. It is going to take a little bit of time to clean up here. But it is another triple. And they will sustain their advantage on time as the triples continue to roll in. Boone diving in with the Twin Hogs. Queen Charge Twin Hogs just got the new level of the Hog Riders, which obviously is going to affect and give Super Hog Riders an extra level as well. But he will go ahead and set up with the Frozen Arrow Queen Charge here. Like we said, a lot of people running Frozen Arrow for the Queen Charge attacks, and then a lot of people also switching over to the Healer Puppet for the non-Queen Charge attacks for the Hero Dives. But we'll see what Boone can do here as he wraps off the left there, looking to aim towards that Town Hall. Ooh, very, very close. I was keeping an eye on these healers because if that scatter shot locked onto the healers, could have been devastating, but he just had the spacing perfectly on that so the healers don't get targeted. The queen's gonna go ahead and try to charge all the way over to this town hall. 
Should be able to pull off the clan castle troops as well. Does bring in the siege barracks. Remember that, Eric, the siege barracks also got to change. Look at that. Two P.E.K.K.A.s now come out, which is a lot of free housing space. Uh, 25 extra housing space there to give those wizards extra protection, and that makes so the wizards get way more value with that tanky down in front of them without having to best like the king or something over there. But the queen taking a little damage there from the poison tower onto her healers, but that should be okay there as long as it gets the Coco Loons down. It looks like he was able to get the bulk of the traps there around the town hall cleared out there. The queen is clear for landing. She will step in there and take it without an issue, but here comes the super hog riders directly to the core of the base there with the, I guess, running the... The Apprentice Warden, which will make so that he can run a healing tome here instead of running the Life Gem, which is a very, very smart way to run the Hog Riders in general, but holding on to the bulk of his regular Hog Riders to give flank support there, always going to be a good idea. And it's not like you bring a ton of regular Hogs on this, just a handful, just to keep those Super Hogs working through the middle of the base. He did have regular Hogs inside of that Siege Barracks and timed it up perfectly. Once that Siege Barracks was ready to deploy the Hogs, he was ready to deploy his Super Hogs. Keep it on the Royal Champion as she's going to start picking off some of these Hog Riders. Needs his Royal Champion to catch up and help her help them out a little bit. But those Super Hogs are doing some nice work. Queen is still alive there with ability. This is looking really strong for Boone. Very, very strong here. And on top of that, I don't know if you noticed, but he had a max level Haze Gem that he's going to pop right there. Royal Champion surging across the base there. The Haze Gem giving her so much movement speed, so much attack power. Easily sweeps out the back end, and the Hogs go the distance on this one. Method of Madness going to leave only only 30 seconds on the clock here, but I think after the last one, they're so far behind in time that I think they just need to make sure that they triple this last attack and they gotta pray for a defense right now. When we get these new pieces of equipment, I'm always watching to see what the pros do as far as which ones they are upgrading. And the first thing that I've noticed is Everybody's either using the Royal Gem with either Seeking Shield or the Haste Vial. And that makes me think that maybe, maybe that Hog Puppet that everybody was kind of hyped about. I was personally hyped about it. I thought that was going to be a no-brainer for everybody to toss in. But we see very, very few of the pro players using it. Even though I know that a lot of them have already gemmed it to Max there. So, I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is very, very good insight for the rest of us to pay attention to what they are upgrading. Because that will probably tell you your best in slots depending on how you want to use it. Well, the Haste Spell is also really nice when you pair it with the Spirit Fox because if you could time that up, and we've, we've seen it where that haste spell just comes in so clutch that RC gets moving, she gets attacking faster. It's just a nice combination. Look at this one from this. Finn, bringing in tons and tons of super barbs around the outside of the base, just to set up the pathing here for the queen to go into the middle of the base. He does have a lalo for the back end here as we take a look at the hero equipment. Does have that healer puppet. A lot of times when we're seeing these hero dives, we're seeing that healer puppet on the queen now. We do have a couple balloons and the lava hounds out of the clan castle, and this log launcher should open everything up. Traditional equipment on the Royal Champion. I I think he was trying to get the Seeking Shield plus the Earthquake to hit that uh, multi-inferno in the core of the base there, but the Log Launcher with the Royal Champion working together were able to get the pathing for the Yetis to pop out. They get the multi-inferno down. If they get the Eagle Artillery down, that would be enormous value right there. But they're gonna fall Our just queen. short of that, and he will get the multi arch tower. The queen's heading that way, though. Watch the queen right here. She has all the buildings on her left side there cleared out with what the king was able to do, and so she's gonna take that log launcher path into the core, and she's gonna be in a prime position to get a ton of value out of her ability. And I guess we'll just have to see if she keeps those healers safe there. I don't think they're gonna stay safe there, but I don't think it matters that much there. I think also that the passive healing that is generated by the healer puppet regardless of the healers themselves, is actually able to keep her alive for a pretty significant amount of attack there. But look at this queen. She's turning into a, a charge right there. If he rages her healers right there, she gets the town hall down. Yeah, she's going for this town hall no matter what. He's keeping this uh, rage tower frozen. Oh, wait, queen went down here. So yeah. now the balloons are going to have to circle back. Oh, boy, SE Esports. They could be in a little bit of trouble, oh, Eric. Watch that town hall takedown. Warden stepping up here. Warden is going to get the coverage for the blast. He's got the... Ooh. Life gem? Does he have life gem? Is that what it was? He I took a lot of damage right there. Oh, maybe he's healing gem. Yeah, they're healing gem. Yeah, he's healing, healing but he lost a lot here, Bash. All right, here we go. It's all on the king and these last few balloons. King still does have Phoenix, and King's getting healed up a little bit. But keep an eye on this multi archer tower as it's dealing out significant damage. Does have a couple super barbs here. This might be okay because remember they have they're fine on time. Look at this warden. Look at this warden, warden. working on that multi archer tower. That's a oh, critical warden. defense. And warden takes that. I think he's got oh. it. Warden clutches it before their defense has a chance to shoot him down. That's going to be a little bit of a slow cleanup here, but I think he's got it under control with the King having access to everything else on the base. Yeah, and King is getting healed up there from those healers. Yeah, nothing can even deal damage to the Warden aside from a trap, so 
It's going to be slower, but Van is fine. They were already up on time. Ooh. It was a close call oh. here. Van has to be sweating a little bit, but with 20 seconds remaining, he gets the three star. I still feel like SE still has that time advantage, slight time advantage. I mean, more than I, slight. I, yeah, like I was going to say, my advantage. numbers are probably uh, have them up about a minute and 10 seconds. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot, but Method Madness has to set the bar here, and I think they just need to not even bother to think about time. They just need to make sure that this one's a triple. It's going to be such a big task to be able to beat them on time at this point. They need to make sure that they concentrate, and they make sure that this one goes through full steam ahead. As Stay Away goes in with a Headhunter Wallbreaker with the King, going to go in there and get the defensive Road Champion of the way there. Wall breaking him through. Giant Gauntlet surges him ahead, and the Queen will make her way down south towards the Town Hall with her Frozen Arrow and make a charge towards that town hall. Ooh, lots of balloons going in here, searching for traps. Want to make sure he's not walking into a bait. Yeah, and the, the rocket balloons actually forced the king to go to Phoenix, so king could have perhaps got a little bit more, maybe even dealt, dealt some damage to those ice goals, but instead the rocket balloons deal damage and take the king out. More balloons coming in here, searching for traps. The queen will be held up here as she fine. deals with these ice golems and the balloons, but you're right, she'll be fine over there. Siege Barracks comes in from the top to accompany the Root Riders. I like the Siege Barracks play here because the queen will ha should have no problem getting to the town hall. So now the Siege Barracks will actually accompany these Root Riders right through the middle. Also on top of that, the P.E.K.K.A.s to come out and all the Wizards will support the Root Riders in a very, very heavy way, making sure that he does have the damage output to deal with ground skellies and defensive heroes and anything else that is going to pop up there and the Ruiners just give them the access to get directly to the defenses but there's the warded ability using eternal tome and the healing tome give them the protection that they need headhunters under the warded ability were able to cross through and got the queen down on the opposite side of the base preemptively and now hog rider is going to join the core of the base and go right into that model giving light troops into the heaviest defense on the base and then the single photo afterwards looking very very good on this one stay away Way, gonna push him to the perfect war and now the only question left to ask is can they find the defense to pair with it we asked if method of madness can keep up with se esports and they show us why they're here in challenge finals stay away gets the final three star the queen secured the town hall and it is a perfect war from method of madness a little bit slower than SE Esports has been, but ultimately SE Esports has to get this final triple. Can they continue their undefeated record and continue to power through these perfect wars? Because they've done it so far all the way through challenge. They were seven and oh, they were undefeated all the way through that. And they did put up a lot of perfect wars, but even, even the best players in the world make mistakes every once in a while. And we're gonna see right now if Jesus can save this war and keep them in the lead. He's gonna go in with the Zap Lolo. This is his signature attack. He gets down the Inferno and the Rage Tower right there. A little bit of extra as well as he spreads the lightning out, gets the King Pad as well. And he can begin his path into the base. We see the healer puppet with the giant gauntlet on the king and queen. We see the healing healing tome there on the warden. And then we'll see on that Royal Champion, he is running the Royal Gem with the max out Haze Vial. And we'll see if that's enough to carry him through here, Bash. Haze Vial is going to be really, really nice. And the nice thing is it is a common equipment, so it's a little bit cheaper to get it maxed out. I know that was my first priority when the update came out, was maxing out my Haze Vial. King goes to Giant Gauntlet here and is going to go ahead and search through. Remember, when he's in that Giant Gauntlet form, he's going to be able to have a little bit of splash. Does actually get the Invisibility Tower to go off as well. So that I'll pre-trigger that. So now he can sweep through with the Lalo and take this Town Hall down if he needs to. Log Launcher drops out the Electro Titan, which will quickly burn him through the defensive Lava Hound and get this Queen back in action. Also getting some support there for the defensive King. But the Lalo needs to make it through the Town Hall. He does have that Invisibility Tower pre-triggered by the Log Launcher. So he's going to be smooth sailing into the area. He does does freeze up there multiple times to make sure that it goes down. And then he can pop that ward ability, get his blues protected through the blast, and then heals right back up as they go into the multi inferno. But the queen's right there with the assist. She pops her ability. All of her healers go down except for one. She takes the multi. That was the biggest pick of the need on the backside. And he got the defensive queen down as well. RC still moving. Ability attack is not just a triple, it's lightning fast. Hey, Zeus! Carrying SE Esports to victory. Double perfect war, but they do it so much faster. 
15 to 15 in our opening bout here. Method to Madness went blow for blow with SE Esports. Our first double perfect of the whole tournament. GG's to both squads, but SE Esports will move on to our upper bracket finals. Method to Madness, once again, they were sent packing by Underworld X. And then Method to Madness walked away with $3,000, which for playing Clash of Clans, that's a pretty nice prize.